Hey everyone, it's Maggie here with a vlog in late January, which is months after I would like to be talking with you guys. Um, I've been having kind of a rough few months, so I uh, cut out a lot of things that I miss, so I'm hoping to get back into vlogging, which I always say, I always apologize, but now we get into the games. <laughs> um, I have been playing a lot of games. I, that's the one nice thing about this month and last month is that I logged a lot of plays. Uh, so I have lots to talk about, um, but the, the thing that I uh, went to today was an unpub, so unpublished prototype games at my uh, Mux Boarding House store. And so we invited, I think there were about 12 designers to bring in their prototypes and playtest them with anyone they could get to show up to the event. Um, it was my original intention to play as many of these as possible and get them all documented, and then I got kind of sucked into one that was a little bit longer. So I ended up only playing three games. Um, I saw uh, Burger Dice, which is Matthew Gravelin. I saw that game, and I saw um, Dragon's Gold, which was um, a new game to me. I had never seen it before. And I saw those ones, but I didn't get to play them. Uh, the three that I did play were... Um, I played Valyria, I played Sarah's Singularity, and I played For Greed or Glory. So Valyria is a board game that's pretty close to done. They're just kind of balancing the cards. And this is Isaiah's, I want to say, uh, Valeo? No, Valeo? I, when I grew up in California, there was a city that was named the same thing as his last name, and everyone I knew pronounced it Vallejo. So, I know that's not how he pronounces his name, but it's stuck in my head that way forever. Um, but he was the designer of Sunrise City, which came out a while ago. Sunrise City was this crazy art deco game where you're kind of building upon buildings, and you want to score points in multiples of 10 because you got extra points for it. And it was really fun and cool, and your, your board state at the end of the game was this very neat three-dimensional thing. Um, Valeria is a mixture. He said it's very much inspired, and you can feel it, by Machi Koro, and it's got a little bit of like a glory to Rome, kind of follow you on actions type feel. So, Machi Koro style, you have cards out on the board that are purchasable. Every time you roll a die that matches their number, you would activate them. Um, the dice, if I roll a three and a two, would activate any threes I have, any twos I have, and any fives I have. So you get to use the sum and the parts. Um, that makes the, the lower value cards so much better than the higher value cards. Each of them has a symbol, and they either pay you out in money, strength, or mana. Strength is used to kill bad guys, so goblins and trolls and spiders. Money is used to buy more cards and to buy domains, which require specific symbols, so I have to have like a fighter, a rogue, and a holy person to get this one encampment, but when I buy it, it gives me some sort of either permanent or immediate benefit. Um, so the game is really close to done. It's just got a little bit of a kind of funky turn order thing where everyone forgot which turn it was, and um, some of the cards are less than good. So. If I hit on an 11 or 12 in a game like that where I have to get like a 5 and a 6 on a die, I would like that ability to be a little bit better. That was the only card that really stuck out to me as being not good or fun or why would you ever buy that. Um, the other ones that were kind of funky were that the 3s and the 6s were pretty similar. So if I rolled two 3s, I'd activate my two 3s and then I would activate, activate my 6. So, and it happened twice in our game, so maybe I was just being biased. Um, that game is really fun and smart, and it would make a nice addition to Machi Koro. <sighs> there we go, that's one. No more yums. Um, next, I got to play Sarah Singularity with um, Thomas, who ran the Unpub event. Um, so, Thomas had made this game. Um, it's a time travel card game. You're going from space to space in different time periods trying to build up cards to complete missions. And 
I, I would say that in its current state, it has a very strong Chrononauts Flux flavor. It feels like a Looney Labs game. Um, yes, it was time travel, so it's going to lend itself to the Chrononauts uh, comparison, but you're also kind of flipping cards to make other cards go, and it, it's got this kind of, it's got a, a feel kind of like Chrononauts. Um, and unfortunately, Thomas had never played that. So it didn't help me in identifying what about the game needed to be tweaked. The only thing I told him was that the game was pretty slow to pick up. It had one symbol and two symbol cards, and most of the time when you play a card, you have to pick another card up. So it's hard to add symbols to a given mission. Um, only one card was appearing per round for us, so the number of cards available didn't really advance or accelerate and so we asked him for some ability to trash cards to get benefits something to help us let the game level up without having a bunch of kind of boring turns in between the game itself was very fun you kind of flip those cards you put them back in your hand you get to manipulate the turn order each person's turn order determines their special abilities, so you're also affecting that, and that's got kind of a poker element to it, but um, there was no come from behind. Once there was a leader, there was there was no stopping them, so um, healthy margin when I won that one. Yes, I won the game. I won two games today. For Greed of Glory um, had kind of its own challenges and good parts. That is Parallax Games, and they're out of Vancouver, BC. Um, this is a full-scale board game, and often when you play at Unpubs, you don't see a lot of board games because they're not very um, inexpensive. They're very expensive to produce, and this was high production value. Lots of interacting bits and things that are going on. So... This one had two main phases. It had an economic phase and it had a military phase. And during the economic phase, um, there you have a spin value that's just going to either get you clockwise or counterclockwise a certain number of spaces. And wherever you land, that's where you're going to take your economic action. So at the beginning of the round, you're kind of playing a card to affect that, giving other people bonuses or yourself bonuses, and then moving and then trying to control wherever you move. So if I move into the United States, I can put money down and try and control the United States. Okay, two, okay. Um, that part of the game was very smart and mitigated and cool and you could pay money to affect it and you, you really, you had to try to make that, um, it was always going to be a cool, fun action that you got to do. It just you didn't get to do them often enough. Um, your military action, you have kind of influence out on the board. You always have one military presence, and then any uh, countries that you have dominance over, which was basically more than half of the available territories, you got to take over their kind of bullet and move it around the board. And so your military is running around trying to access those military, um, trying to take over the spots so you could pay gold onto them to control them as well and you get bonuses for anything you control. Um, I had a huge problem with the downtime in the game. It was too significant. It was not playable for a first play. It would be playable for multiple plays. I'm sure in my eighth game there wouldn't be that kind of downtime. but. In our hobby, you have to get people past the first game. If they don't like their first game of it, or at least don't see the light, they're never going to play the second game, and they're going to sell or talk down about your game to all their friends. So you really need to get that initial game flavor up. Um, but Parallax Games was very open to some of those chats and we ended up talking after the game about a few more things because in the moment it's hard to tell when everyone's saying something different about your game. You can't just take every piece of advice and just flip it around and take it. But we did want to talk a little bit more about like how is the game viable and is a war game 
viable that doesn't have your traditional war game elements in it. It's not counters, it's not troops, it's uh, much more like a Euro game with a very strong military theme. Uh, I, I did, I felt bad. I told them that their, their title sounded very American and they're Canadian, so I don't know how they took that, but for greed or glory sounds just like very Eagles and USA. That's just my opinion. Um, so all in all, a great unpub day. I can't wait for the next one. Um, it's the kind of event that I've always wanted us to be able to do at work. And now that we have Mox Boarding House, we have a little more space. And so that was helpful. Um, after For Greed of Glory was done, I was, I was pretty ready for some silly stuff. So we went back and played Linko and Pears and drank some beers and had some pizza. And that's always a good way to end the night. Um, it was good to talk with you all. I will be back and I will chat with you guys about Craftsman and Kanban and Stouffer Dynasty. And oh my god, if you see Stouffer Dynasty, just go buy it now because it's as good as you want it to be. And that'll be my entire review for that game right now. That's done. <laughs> um, so I'm going to go and nap a little bit, but I will see you guys soon. Bye.